Hey guys, this is Austin Reed, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything that you need to know about scraping evictions for the real estate market. Now, there's a lot of different reasons why you might wanna get access to this data. For one, you might be doing seller financing and you might be looking for houses that you can send offers to. Number two, maybe you wanna invest in the area and you wanna make sure that the area doesn't have a tendency to attract bad tenants. Whatever the reason may be, there is a lot of people who would like to have access to this data right at their fingertips. Imagine the power that you could have if you got real-time alerts every time an eviction happens and you even got the only owner's information so that you could reach out to them. I'm going to show you guys how to set all of this up and more, but before we get started, I do have a small disclaimer. This video is meant to be a high level overview showing you guys exactly how you can implement this for you or your team. I'll talk about the different technologies that you guys can use. Some of them will be really easy and you can set them up in a couple of minutes. Others won't be quite as easy. I'll even show you where to find some of the contact information once you grab some of these addresses from the eviction order. However, this video is intended for people who don't have a lot of time and they would just like to hire somebody or a small team to get this done for them. This video is intended to make you dangerous enough to identify who to hire and what to tell them to build you a system to build a scraper that would honestly work in any industry at all, especially the real estate industry. That being said, if you want to get your hands dirty and you want to build these scrapers yourself, I do have a lot of videos on my channel covering just how to do that. So just Check out my channel if you need to. And for those of you other guys, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing, and this is the most important thing, I believe it's a little obvious, but a lot of people tend to miss this, is you need to know where to get the data from. Now, most evictions across the United States are posted on a county website. Some of those websites have that information publicly available, so you can just open your browser right now, go to the website, and start looking through court records to find the eviction record. Records. Now, some of these you have to register and get a login for. Some of them you have to pay monthly to get access to those logins. And there are even some where you have to pay money per record that you look at. There are also a lot of third-party data providers that collect this data and provide them to people just like you for a small monthly fee. Now, not all data providers cover every county in the entire United States. So you're definitely gonna have to do a little bit of research to make sure the data provider that you choose is giving you the information that you're looking for. Outside of these online websites, a lot of these records are still just stored publicly in the local office in paper form. And some of these records are not available to the public at all. So obviously the only websites we're going to be able to target here are the government websites where you can pay either monthly, you get a login, or it's just public access, and the data providers that just provide the data. Some of these data providers offer services where they can just give you alerts on automatically. In those cases, you don't need to build anything at all. But if they don't have some of those things in place, we can still build some programs to kind of help give some extra tools on the data provider's info so that you guys can get the alerts and the information that you guys need. Now, we have helped build one of these scrapers for one of our clients before. I'm not going to say where, what county, or anything like that, but I can tell you it was from a publicly accessible county website that had no logins whatsoever. The difficulty on that website was not that the information wasn't readily available, it was that alongside those eviction records, there was also records for pretty much everything that went through the county court. So in order for us to get the information that we needed, we had to go through every single record in that county every single day and match those records to check to see if the code for an eviction was on those documents. Once we identified the documents we were looking for, we went ahead and saved them. Now for that particular county that we were working on, the owner's information of the building was actually on the eviction record itself, so there was not a lot of fumbling to try to find his information. That being said, there are a lot of services where you can provide an address and it will come back at you with a name and a phone number of the person that owns the building. You can use something like a reverse address lookup. You can look that up on Google and you'll be surprised at the number of services that pop up. There are also some 
Linux scripts that can grab this information for free that's just sitting out there on the internet. Now, those Linux scripts are stuff that private investigators and hackers use. I'm not going to cover too much about that, but I just wanted to make you guys aware that that is a possibility as well. I'm mostly going to cover the reverse address lookup. Now, these are services where you can pay per record or per month and get a certain amount of records automatically. A lot of them have API access, which means you can integrate them directly into whatever scraper it is you're trying to build so that when you get the report of the eviction, you have the address, you might even get a photo of their house, you might get their phone number, get the owner's name, their email, and their current residential address of where they're living now. With all that information available, you'll be able to make a decision of whether or not you'd like to reach out to these people. All right, so now let's jump into some of the more technical parts of this conversation. I am going to bring up different possibilities of scrapers that you can use. And some of them will be really easy, a couple of clicks. You might be able to set them up in about 15 minutes and do it yourself. Others of these, you're going to have to spend some time and maybe even find someone who can build them for you. That being said, if you need a scraper and you don't want to deal with the technical hassle, so we can do that for you. So go ahead and check out the link down below. Let's go ahead and start with the easy scrapers. Now, a couple of really easy low hanging fruit are scrapers like IDS, Instant Data Scraper. Now, this one's entirely free. It's a Chrome extension you can download. And honestly, it's my first go to bat when I'm trying to scrape something. If IDS works and it's just data that I need to grab every once in a while or just once, I'll just try it just to see if it works because it's so easy to use. Literally in a couple of buttons, you're already grabbing information. Then you have a couple of slightly more complex scrapers like Appify or Octoparse. Now these are also very easy to use. Generally, you can get them done in a couple of clicks. Octoparse does have some more advanced features where you can actually start coding some of the stuff yourself, but it also has some easy point and click features as well. Now the big major con with some of these easy options is that they don't always work and they don't always work as intended. So sometimes they won't grab the data at all or sometimes they'll grab the data but then you need to do further processing with that data or sometimes it only grabs a portion of the data but not everything that you actually need. So then if you want to take that data and further process it, for example, add an owner's name and an owner's phone number to that data, then all of a sudden the process is not so automatic. And that's where custom scrapers come in. You see, custom scrapers are built for your target in mind and for your specific use case. They're generally built in something like Python or JavaScript using technologies like Selenium, Beautiful Soup, or Puppeteer, and their objective is to make your life entirely easy. You see, with a custom scraper, you can have something that runs on a timer every single day and gives you a report or an alert via text message or email every Every single time an eviction hits the county's door. With access to that information at your fingertips, you could be the first person that reaches out to these guys who are dealing with the eviction, and that could be the difference between a sale and not having a sale. So then what you would do is you would couple your data source with a scraper. The scraper would grab the information from the data source, and then it would further process it by using the reverse address lookup to grab the owner's information, and then it would use a service, something like Twilio, to give you those alerts or emails that you're looking for every single day. You could even take that another step further and every time an eviction happens, send out a physical letter and an email to the person who's the owner of that house to just see if they're interested in possibly selling their house. Now, I would say you could have it automatically call these people, but using AI for automated dialing is against the law. But now you're starting to understand the power of what could really be done here at scale, right? So really what you need to get this done, believe it or not, is only one backend script developer. You're ideally looking for someone who's an expert in Selenium or Puppeteer who knows either Python or JavaScript. 
Now, I recommend that you find your developers on either Upwork or LinkedIn. Completely avoid Fiverr. Developers on Fiverr, generally speaking, are pretty low quality. You're really looking for developers in South America, Africa, some in Europe, and Ukraine is really good. Indian developers can be really cool. Uh, it's just there's a language barrier there that's really hard to get past. I noticed that the South American people, it's a little bit easier to cross that language barrier, and there's a lot of less misunderstandings that tend to happen and so that's something to be aware of and to give you a rough idea of cost and time frame it really depends on the developer and the website and how good the developer really is right if you're dealing with a government website most government website security is really really bad so generally speaking they should be able to make that script in a couple of hours if not one or two days which means the total cost for that script would be anywhere between a couple hundred dollars and a thousand bucks of course this also depends on how big your workflow is at the end, if you're integrating AI or not, if you're doing uh, real-time alerts, if you're doing the address reverse lookup, or if you're just grabbing the records itself, right? Now, if you choose to use some of these data providers that I was talking about, that's where things might get a little bit harder. A lot of data providers, they grab their data by some of these more malicious means like scraping. And so they understand what it is to be scraped and so they also have good security against scraping. Any type of website where you first have to log in automatically is a little bit more difficult, okay? And then if they have something like Cloudflare or some advanced security integrated directly into their website, it can become rather difficult really quickly to start scraping some of these sites. It is never impossible. You will always be able to do it. The question is, is how long will it take for the programmer to figure it out and how much is it going to cost? Websites with a lot of security in place could take a week or two, sometimes even more in order to crack. And if you're stacking on multiple different scrapers for multiple different websites and you have a big workflow behind it, this could easily become a multiple thousand dollar project. Now, one side note I do have to mention, you should definitely read your terms of use and terms of conditions of the websites you intend to scrape, which have a login screen. So there's a kind of unwritten rule here. Any publicly accessible information that's not behind the login screen in court won't stand up against the scraper. However, that being said, if you're paying for a service and the service says you're only allowed to have access to this many records and that if you use malicious means to get access to more records then you're liable for that you definitely need to check out for that because that in court will not stand up so you just got to make sure that you're doing it properly now, once the scraper's built, you can either run it on your computer with a couple of simple commands. You might even have the programmer set it up to run on a timer on your computer. Or if you're a little bit more sophisticated, you might want to get a simple server on Volter for like $5 or $10 a month. So it just auto runs on autopilot and you just get emails or text messages whenever there's any updates. So I hope that this video helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. And if you guys want to make your own scraper I do have some videos covering that so be sure to check out my channel and I hope you guys have a wonderful day